Prayer for the offering of the bread in the traditional Latin Mass. Accept, O Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, this spotless host which I, thine worthy servant, offer unto thee, my living and true God, to atone for my numberless sins, offenses, and negligences. On behalf of all here present, and likewise for all faithful Christians living and dead, that it may profit me and them as a means of salvation unto life everlasting. This prayer tells us that the Mass is first and foremost a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice offered to atone for our numberless sins, offenses, and negligences, and it is offered for the living and the dead. Every valid Mass replicates Calvary, so it follows that at every valid Mass the work of redemption is performed. Jesus offers himself through the ministry of the priest as a sacrifice to atone for sin. Before examining the offertory prayers of the New Rite, it must be pointed out that it is no longer called an offertory. In the New Rite, it is called the preparation of the gifts. The term offertory had to go in the New Rite because it was a stumbling block for the Protestants. The 16th century Protestant reformer, Martin Luther, called the offertory an abomination, on account of which nearly everything sounds and reeks of oblation. In Luther's new service, he replaced the offertory with an instruction to prepare the bread and wine, just as Luther had done by changing the name, the modernists who wrote the new Mass were able to eliminate this undesirable concept. Prayer for the Offering of the Bread in the New Mass Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. The prayer for the offering of the bread in the new rite bears absolutely no resemblance to the offertory prayer of the traditional rite. So where did it come from? The origin of the prayer is actually Jewish. This prayer was taken from the Jewish Seder table blessing. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the world, who bringeth to us bread from the earth. The concept of offering a sacrifice to atone for sin is abhorrent to the Protestants. The Protestants view their services as nothing more than a memorial meal. Removing the sacrifice for sin reduces the new rite to nothing more than a Protestant memorial meal. If the new rite is only a memorial meal, then a table blessing is most appropriate. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the world, who bringeth to us bread from the earth. It is the offertory that distinguishes the holy sacrifice of the Mass from a memorial meal. Not only does this prayer of the new rite not offer the sacrifice to atone for sin, the prayer never does clearly state the purpose of the offering. The prayer states, We have received the bread we offer you, but it never does state why it is offered. The Council of Trent teaches as a doctrine of faith that the Holy Mass is a true propitiatory sacrifice, that is to say, it is a sacrifice offered to atone for sin. Jesus died on the cross to atone for sin. The Mass is a renewal of Jesus' passion and death on the cross. If a rite is not offered to atone for sin, it cannot be the renewal of Jesus' passion and death on the cross. A liturgy that is not offered to atone for sin is therefore not a Mass. The term work of human hands introduces a question as to what is being offered. This expression was inserted into the text at the behest of Paul VI himself, who thought that the prayer should express the concept of man's work consecrated to the Lord. This idea, it turns out, originated in the writings of the Jesuit Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Teilhard was a modernist, an evolutionist, and a pseudomystic. 
He had been silenced by the Holy Office in 1925 and forbidden to publish anything on religious matters. The source is Teilhard's 1918 essay, Mass on the World. To imply, as the new prayers do, that the work of human hands, like the bread and wine, is somehow consecrated at Mass, is another example of the modernist trick of substitution and devaluation. It destroys the reality of the consecration, it degrades the real presence, and it renders meaningless the Church's teaching on the matter required for confecting the sacrament. It is also, at least implicitly, heretical. The prayer states, it will become for us the bread of life. Bread of life is another non-specific ecumenical term that can mean whatever one wants it to mean. Bread of life can refer to the bread we eat at everyday meals to sustain life. The general instruction for the Roman Missal tells us that the new Mass is the people of God called together with the priest presiding. This introduces some ambiguity as to who is performing the service, the priest or the assembly. In the traditional Latin Mass, the priest says the prayer first person singular, I, Accept, O Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, the spotless host which I, your unworthy servant, offer to you. In the new rite, the prayer is said, first person plural, we. We have received the bread we offer. This makes it unclear whether the new rite is offered through the special sacerdotal power of the priest or whether it is offered through the power of the assembly. It appears to assign to the assembly a priestly function that it has no power to exercise. This emphasis on the assembly performing the service is yet another Protestant concept introduced into the new rite. Prayer for the mixing of the water and wine in the traditional Latin Mass. O God, who hast established the nature of man in wondrous dignity, and still more admirably restored it, grant that through the mystery of this water and wine we may be made partakers of his divinity, who condescended to become partaker of our humanity, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Consider how this prayer begins. O God, who established the nature of man in wondrous dignity. Here the prayer refers to the creation of man by God. It reminds us that we were created in a state of wondrous dignity. Next the prayer says, and still more admirably restored it. This reminds us that we have fallen and lost that state of dignity in which we were created. This is the reason why we need a sacrifice to atone for sin. It is because we have fallen that we need a Redeemer to restore us to that state of innocence. Next, the prayer asks that we may be made partakers of His divinity. This refers to the reception of Holy Communion. Because when we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we become partakers of His divinity. Next, the prayer says, Who condescended to become partaker of our humanity. This refers to the chief teaching of the Catholic Church about Jesus Christ, that He is God made man. Prayer for the mixing of the water and wine in the new Mass. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Notice what has been removed in the new rite. There is no mention of man's creation by God. There is no mention of his state of innocence, no mention of his fall. No mention of man's redemption. Why were these concepts removed? These doctrines were all obstacles to ecumenism. These are all concepts to which non-Catholics object, and therefore they had to go. Without a fall, you no longer need a sacrifice for sin. In fact, by removing the fall, you no longer need a Redeemer. Notice also that once these Catholic concepts have been removed, the prayer becomes ambiguous. To share in the divinity of Christ could even be interpreted in a New Age way. 
prayer for the offering of the wine in the traditional Latin Mass. We offer thee, O Lord, the chalice of salvation, humbly begging of thy mercy that it may arise before thy divine majesty with a pleasing fragrance for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Prayer for the offering of the wine in the new mass. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the world, who bringeth to us bread from the earth. This prayer is just another Jewish table blessing. It offers the wine, but it does not give a reason why the offering is made. It will become spiritual drink. Spiritual drink is yet another non-specific ecumenical term that can mean whatever one wants it to mean. Prayer beseeching God to accept our sacrifice in the traditional Latin Mass. In a humble spirit and with a contrite heart, may we be accepted by thee, O Lord, and may our sacrifice be offered in thy sight this day as to please thee, O Lord God. This is one of only two prayers that remain intact from the traditional offertory prayers. Prayer beseeching God to accept our sacrifice in the new rite. With humble spirit and joy, our hearts are to you, The new Mass is still called a sacrifice, but the rite has been stripped of any hint that it is a sacrifice offered to atone for sin. At best, it is a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Remember that the Protestants are willing to call their services a sacrifice, but only a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. They specifically refuse to call their services a sacrifice offered to atone for sin. Consider that this Anglican service is also called a sacrifice. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. The Mass as a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving only, without also being offered to atone for sin, was specifically condemned at the Council of Trent. The Council of Trent states, If anyone says that the sacrifice of the Mass is one only of praise and thanksgiving, let him be anathema. Prayer to the Holy Ghost in the traditional Latin Mass. Come thou sanctifier, almighty and eternal God, and bless this sacrifice prepared for the glory of thy holy name. This prayer is an unambiguous profession of faith that the Holy Ghost is God. The prayer calls upon his name to bless the sacrifice. This is an acknowledgement that we need his intercession for our sacrifice to be acceptable. The prayer to the Holy Ghost has been entirely omitted in the new rite. Prayer for the washing of the fingers in the traditional Latin Mass. I will wash my hands among the innocent, and I will walk around thy altar, O God, to hear the voice of thy praise and to tell all thy wondrous deeds. Lord, I love the beauty of thy house and the place where thy glory dwells. Destroy not my soul with impious, O God, nor my life with men of blood in whose hands there is iniquities, whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my innocence. Rescue me and be gracious to me. My foot stands in the straight way. In the assemblies I will bless thee, O Lord. This prayer teaches several very Catholic ideas. If there are innocent people, it follows that there are guilty people as well. Therefore, the prayer acknowledges that salvation is a struggle and all men will not be saved. Next, the prayer states, I will go around your altar, O Lord. An altar is for offering sacrifice. Next, the prayer states, I love the house in which you dwell. This is an explicit recognition of God's presence in his temple, more specifically, his real presence in the Eucharist. Prayer for the washing of the fingers in the new rite. Notice what has been removed in the new rite. There is no mention of our need for redemption. There is no mention of the temple of God or God's presence in this temple. No mention of an altar. It's of interest that the new rite takes place on a table 
rather than an altar. The tabernacle has been removed from that table and placed off to the side. The focus of the new rite appears to be centered on man rather than centered on God. The concept of God's presence in his temple has been removed because it was an obstacle to ecumenism. Prayer to the Trinity in the traditional Latin Mass. Accept, Most Holy Trinity, this offering which we are making to you in remembrance of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of Jesus Christ our Lord, and in honor of Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints whose relics lie on the altar, and of all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid in our salvation, and may they deign to intercede in heaven for us, who honor their memory here on earth, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. This prayer is first an explicit profession of faith in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It is a profession of faith in the perpetual virginity of Mary and the intercessory power of the communion of saints. This prayer to the Trinity has been entirely omitted in the New Rite. It is noteworthy that the prayer to the Holy Ghost is omitted, as well as the prayer to the Trinity. Why would these prayers be omitted in the New Rite? It would appear that the New Rite does not want to profess a belief in the Trinity, or the perpetual virginity of Mary, or the intercessory power of the saints. These are all doctrinal concepts to which non-Catholics object, and therefore they had to go in the New Rite. The law of prayer determines the law of belief. Our prayer reflects our belief, and our beliefs are reflected in our prayer. Pope Pius XII wrote in Mediator Dei, the entire liturgy, therefore, has the Catholic faith as its content, inasmuch as it bears public witness to the faith of the Church. To accommodate ecumenism, the innovators removed from the new rite all the doctrinal concepts that are uniquely Catholic. If the liturgy bears witness to the faith of the Church, what, then, is the faith to which the new rite bears witness to? The Priest's Invitation to Pray in the Traditional Latin Mass Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our advantage and that of all his holy church. The Priest's Invitation to Pray in the New Rite Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of for our coming good of all of us. church. The priest's invitation from the old mass, Orate Fratres, pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty, was likewise deregulated. In the mass of Paul VI, it is one of the introductions or admonitions that, according to the new legislation, the priest is free to adapt to the actual situation of the community. So while conservative young Father Retro, who likes to say the black and do the red, uses the old formula verbatim at one Mass, at the next Mass, his boss, warm and welcoming Father Chuck, is free to adapt the text spontaneously any way he sees fit. Especially since Father Chuck's new boss, it turns out, likes to do the same. Oh, 
Deo Patris, sit God.